This is a live session that I did in NL Lug. This is same time 851 and how do you get there? It's a quick walkthrough of the steps and things you need to consider moving. Okay, it is time because I only have 45 minutes. And they've been very mean to us and I tend to go long usually, but we'll be done on time. 45 minutes, right? Four o'clock. Okay, same time session. This is a big change for this one. We're gonna talk about how you can plan to move to 851 in 45 minutes. We're gonna talk about all the components, the architecture, the design, the layout, everything else that you need to know. Hopefully, ask plenty of questions as you go. Okay, think about that as you go along. So the two things of, you know, the who I am, so you understand, some of you may know who I am, some may not. Corporate side, Connectrio, we're Lotus's largest hosting provider. So we run any environment you can imagine in Lotus. Any software version, any product version, you name it, we have it running. Half the suppliers out there and vendors, someone runs their software on our systems. So we have the, the background of firewalls, NATs, VPNs, networks, whatever you want to cover. Is anyone certified in the same time? Taking the exam yet? No? What do you guys do all day? Nothing? No same time? No one to get certified anymore? This is where most of you can find me. So when we get to the end, if you need to find me, I do notes on anything. Stuart, anything? On any network? Yeah, He'll, any network. So Facebook, stuff, anything you need to find me on, I do notes. Remember that. Even the ones that have been invented. Yes, if it hasn't been invented, I already own the name on that <laughs> network. <laughs> And even ones that you may think I've never heard of that runs on your home server, I have an account. It is on it is every network. So what do we need to do? The first thing you need to know about 851 is that your current environment is still valid. It still exists. Meaning you can carry it forward to 851 without adding any additional components, without making any other changes except an upgrade. So keep that in mind as we go. You can easily just upgrade 851 on your current server as if nothing else ever existed. But if you want all the new components, that's where we have to look at the architecture. How many of you are at 80 at least in the same time on your servers? Is anyone on 65 still? We have sympathy for you. No? 85. Oh, you 65. He raised his hand quick. Yeah, 65. Everyone else 7? Yeah, does anyone, who doesn't have same time installed at all? And this is your first install possibly. Even earlier. Really? From earlier. Even older version. <laughs> good. No, that's good. <laughs> you run something older than six still? Yes. It's two, five? Three? Three, I suddenly don't feel too well. Um, yeah, two, five was the point at which they started to make some progress. And from two, five to six, five, or actually seven dot oh, it never changed. They, there was really nothing that changed inside of the core engines of same time until 7.5 came. Then they started enhancing the client, but the server stayed the same. In 8.0, the server stayed the same, but the client enhanced again. In 8.5 is when everything changed for the server side. Right? The client's been around for a while. So we'll talk about where that fits in. Everything we talk about can be staged. You can do it all at once, or you can put pieces in at a time, or you can deploy a few things and wait for the rest. It's totally independent of what you want to do. So you're able to do that. Has anyone deployed any piece of 8.5, 8.5.1 yet? What part did you do? Just go ahead. Uh, the whole package. The whole package. Everything. Yeah? How long did it take you? A very long time. Very long time. Uh, Good well, answer. We were also involved in the beta program, and most yeah. of those releases were not No. Well, yeah, not... not not fully baked, but long enough. But it took, what, better than two or three days, probably, yeah. to install. How long did yours take? Or whichever one? <laughs> a few months. A few months. <laughs> we even uh, had some uh, IBM <coughs> from Israel over. Oh, one of the code writers. Uh, they really couldn't figure out what way to Just so you know, I love they gave you those energy drinks, because all I hear is <laughs> <laughs> it's all, no, it's, no, it's fine, because it makes me laugh. It's good. Keep going. But it's funny, is I'm glad they gave those with the little suck tops on them, because they're like, everywhere in the room. This is great. Those are fantastic. All right. I've, I've never had a session where we had those before, and I was just drinking one too, but I didn't think. It's going to sound like 35 one-year-olds in the room. <laughs> Perfect. 
So think about your architecture and do not be afraid to ask. I'm not like the other presenters. Some of you may have never seen me before. Ask as we go. More than likely, I won't even follow the slides I made for you myself, okay? They will be available for download. Keep that in mind, so I'll, they'll be available for download. This is the same time as you know it, okay? Every version since 2.5 I've been involved with. We've been a design partner. We've been a beta plan member. All the certifications for same time I've written, every single one of them. So if you get certified administration, I wrote the exams. So you get the idea. So we've been involved in all these pieces. This is currently what you have. Years ago, back in 7.5, they kind of let you know that WebSphere was coming. It started using the deployment manager, right? Plugins, features, things you could add to it. Now, they've taken all of this piece and moved it to the server level. Everything from here on up is what you have today. And it's still there. This does not go away. All these services and pieces are still there through 8.5 in the community services, checked. If you run meetings on your current environment all the way all to 8.0, you still can in 8.5.1. You can run what they now call Same Time Classic. It's a new name. They're not promoting it very heavily, but if you go out there, you'll see it. What you have today will now be called Same Time Classic. Same Time will be known as everything else they're deploying through the WebSphere side. Okay. You can continue on the classic mode if you want. You can still do meetings, you can still do chat, presence, awareness, plugins, everything else. But when we start talking about the extra features in a minute and deployment, that's where it changes. Good? Does everyone understand that part? This server is required and never goes away, even in 8.5. It, it's always going to be there. The difference is going to be what you add on to it. So we'll keep it simple. We'll make it very simple. I'm going to do pictures. I know there's a, also a language piece. We'll do real easy pictures. Right? Everything from 8.0 and prior. Domino, put it on the server. Same time, put it on the server. Add users. Add some more users. Add some more users. That's what you did. That was it. We're done. Right? Not so much in 8.5.1. 851 is not this simple of a picture. This is where it gets a little more complex. What's required, what we have to install, what we need. This part took you all of what? 10 minutes, right? You can install a server with Domino, same time, and add users and be live in 15 minutes in the previous days and just for community and chat now. You can still do that today. Now we need to talk about layering on the new features. Are we good? We understand the dividing line. This part does not go away. A lot of people keep freaking out, language term for the US, keep uh, panicking that this goes away or they have to replace this. No, you do not. You upgrade it to 851, but it stays there, okay? The difference is how it hooks into the new environment. Now, this is what you needed before. We don't have to read it, this is what Lotus told us. You needed a small server, a few gig of RAM, right? a couple gig, a nice processor, a little, very little disk space, and you were chatting, and you had presence, and you can have meetings. Then they came along with 851. And that's on the next slide. They changed the scope just a little bit. What was the size of your hardware you deployed on? Uh, well, I don't know exactly, just but that would be more than one server, I think. More than one server, more than one or two gig of RAM, yeah, definitely. Right? More than one processor. Yeah. More than that in this space. Yeah. Right? You guys get the idea? You're going to be adding. Now this, within range, still applies to the community part of 851. That's what it is. But now the other parts is where we get much bigger. Four gig of RAM per server required. Well, you can get away with some less, but I would never do it. it should, your performance would be just terrible at this level. This space, this is minimalistic. We're going to talk about why you need space on the servers. You can't install a server with 10 gig anymore. You can't even buy drives that size anymore. Right? Every server you get has what? At least 146, 300, half a terabyte. Right? It goes on and on and on. So you're not able to get one that's this small anymore. But what you need to keep in mind is supported versions, supported software, supported OS. And I just picked Windows. All the OSs are listed under that technology. So you can get every version you want. The idea is you're going to have to add a lot more hardware 
and a lot more resources to the hardware to do the pieces. Even for the simplest parts of this. Right. How many of you use the Domino directory for your same time now? Yeah. How many use LDAP already? Okay. Side note, this is what I do. And I'm sorry. A little, little bit of a tangent. Lotus has been telling you since version 6 to start using LDAP. They've been telling you. How did they tell you? Who knows? They gave you a big hint in your Domino environment in version 6. When you upgraded your server the first time, or if you just came into notes in the 6 realm, LDAP starts automatically on your server. They're telling you, you better use LDAP at some point. Here's how you can make this work still and still use Domino. At the same time, server can still point to Domino, but all the rest of these new services will point via LDAP to your directory somewhere. Keep that in mind. This only uses LDAP for the new components. You will not have a Domino directory native. You can point to a Domino directory via LDAP, but it has to use an LDAP call, right? It doesn't understand notes calls. Big difference. Because your community server today probably runs, as many of you raise your hand, half of you, a native local Domino directory. Okay. This is a big change to it. You have lots of choices. You can use Active Directory, you can use Domino, you can use basically Sun 1, you can use Tivoli Directory Integrator, free. Right. But the point is, you have to make an LDAP choice. You will not, will not point your new installs LDAP at your same time server. If you're taking notes, keep that one in mind. That's one to circle. Do not point this install via LDAP at your same time server. It must point to something else in your domain. What happens if you point it via LDAP at your same time server? Does anybody know? Okay, see my classes are a little different. You have to talk. <laughs> you have to participate. Right? None of this just raise your hand. We talk. Why would you not point it at that server? Performance. Right? The same time server is not ready for that type of load. The LDAP calls alone can eat up the resources on your same time classic server. You think about it. Every time a user authenticates, LDAP call. Then when you authenticate again and you do a request for a directory lookup to find your friend, that's an LDAP call. And then he's finding his 10 friends and he's finding his 10 friends. And pretty soon you just see the constant chatter. If you ever turn on logging for LDAP, it never stops. And the chatter is constant. It means it's always accessing the server. You will crash your same time server. So you need to find another place in your Domino domain that you can access via LDAP to get that same directory. Good? How many of you have like users that have 10,000 people in their buddy list? Yeah? They, they add everyone in the company? Does anybody have that user? They add everybody in the company? Nobody knows everybody in the company. Heck, you don't like half the people in your company. Right? Some of you don't like the people you work with immediately in the cube next to you in your company. But yet you want to add everyone to the list. That's what causes some of the calls, presence, awareness, lookups, directory lookups. Okay? LDAP tuning is a separate session, but do not point it at that server. Now, this is thanks to Gab. I didn't want to retype it. It doesn't matter. What they let you know is they added a ton of new support for operating systems, mobile support, you know, more BlackBerry, better performance. They added a bunch of new features in 851. The point of the session is how do we get there? So this is just a reference slide. You can read it at your will later, or you can see it on the tech notes. But the idea is the versioning supports, the OS supports, and then the increasing of audio video capabilities. Does anyone allow audio now using same time audio chat? Yes? How many people? Up to five, right? Everyone in the company can do it? Uh, well, I should. Only five can do it? They're the only five with microphones and speakers? At this moment, yes, we are increasing that. Most of you will never most of you will never be able to do this because your company will not give microphones or headsets to your employees. The IT staff has it. How many of you have a microphone at your desk? The liars. How many of you have a microphone at your desk? It's like five people. You're, you're all telling me stories. How many of your users have speakers? Yeah, most of you? Think about it, and some of them don't. So this audio-visual means nothing, right? AV stuff is not helpful at all. They don't have microphones, they don't have cameras, 
Some of them don't have speakers. The whole media server component may not be necessary for you. <coughs> think about that. As we talk about deployment, think about that. I go to places and they say, we really need the media services. And I say, for who? For us. It's just the four or five IT guys. They want the media services. No one else can use it. Right? Get it on a test server. So they added new features to meetings. Now, these are important. And there's a, this is where you start seeing the difference between classic mode and the new mode. And then we're going to talk about how to implement it. Persistence. When you have a meeting in the classic mode, you schedule it. Start time, end time, it's done. This never goes away. So when you start a meeting now, it's always there, and your users don't have to download code anymore to participate. Remember the little Java and the applets? To participate, that goes away, meaning to view, to watch. If you want to share your, your desktop, there is a download. All right. There is a component download for those to share, but not just to watch. So anyone that just wants to come in and view a presentation, view whatever, the meeting center is always there. <coughs> it never goes away. It's persistent. So you can have people joining in and out of the same meeting link forever. Keep that in mind. Now you do not know a window of time that they may be having a meeting and not having a meeting. They're not reserving a meeting room anymore. They're having an open meeting by a URL or a link. That's a big difference between the two. So presenters must download code. It's very small, but they must do it to present the slides themselves. And now there's more recording formats, meaning non-proprietary formats. So you can record meetings in the MOVs and the MP4 stuff. Besides that, it's just the look and feel of the interface and how it performs for you. The overall looks pretty similar, but now the framework they use makes it look a lot prettier, and it's faster for the users. Okay. The best part is the way they changed some of the communications with the server. T120 is gone, and it now uses HTTP. What does that mean to you for performance? That means more web traffic for you, right? All streaming over HTTP. So when you start tuning your server, you're going to be tuning HTTP performances. Does that make sense? We're talking meetings, not chat meetings. What's not available? No way to schedule a meeting. It's not scheduled. It's always there. You can say I'm going to have a meeting at 2 o'clock. Okay? The problem is that meeting's already there unless it's a brand new time. But after that first time the meeting starts, it's always there from then on. It never goes away. Does that make sense? Who does it not make sense? This is where you can say yes or no. It's okay. <laughs> You're allowed to say no. NAT support, network translation for audio video, not there. If you plan on putting this anywhere in your environment for external or internal users, it must be accessible without NAT. Now, I know where I am standing right now in Europe, which means all of you have 15,000 layers of security just to view a web page, right? NAT will not work. Audio video will not work. Why? Let me explain why. What is it? Well, it's not the multicast because I'm doing a direct communication. The problem is, is the encapsulation of the traffic. So I wrap up the traffic and it includes some internal IP address. I send it through Firewall 1 into the DMZ, Firewall 2, out through their NAT, they may be on VPN, I pass it off and he opens it up and goes 10.11. And he looks around and goes, I don't know who that is and it breaks, all right? Or, and I love this story, it's even better, is I encapsulate it, I pass it to a user that's sitting in another company, and he opens it, and goes, oh, 10.11. whatever, 100. He goes, I know where that is. That's in our environment, let me call there. And he goes, hmm, and calls over there. Now he's shooting network traffic to servers that don't exist on your network. So now he's getting failures there. NAT does not work with audio video. Web stuff, fine. HTTP translation, fine. AV, okay? So don't think if you're going to put it outside the firewall, that's going to work. Or inside and let outside people hit it. This also affects VPN and VMware. So if you're going to use AV, it must be on a piece of hardware. Don't worry about users using VPN or anything else. It's made for behind the firewall, unrestricted traffic. 
Okay? Non translated. There's no more clustering of meetings. Just, you're, you can cluster the actual meeting cells. We'll talk about that. But there's not doing load balancing, right? No EMS, the enterprise meeting server. All that stuff is gone. IPv6 support is in. You can look at that, but you know no one else is running it that I know of. So if you want to be the first, let us know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> media server. Now, what's good about the media server is it pulls the AV work off of your current servers. So now there is a new component. We have a big picture in a second. A big component that's called media server, and it handles media. So your meeting server for meetings no longer has to worry about audio video. Your chat server no longer worries about audio video. They throw all that to the media server. The media server now takes that load. So guess what? If you don't need audio video, this piece of hardware is gone. Right? And you remove the load from the other servers. You don't need it anymore. It doesn't exist. There's some format changes, meaning it now uses some non-proprietary um, codecs, non-proprietary formatting, basically better access, better data quality, better encapsulation, everything else you want is in there, better <coughs> performance. Oh, and multi-way, same point. Most of your users don't have audio and video. This means nothing to you, but you can do multi-chat, multi-video, multi, -video, multi it's, it's a great way to communicate. Most of you will never do it, honestly. It's just there if you need it, but most of you will never do it. Last one is the proxy. Then we're gonna look at the pictures and the port. Web-based. Yeehaw. Web-based, same-time client. How many of you would actually deploy this? One or two, three, four? Why would you deploy it? Think about it. I have reasons, but why would you deploy it? You raise your hand first. You all. Customer chat. What is it? Customer chat. Customer chat, good. Outside the company. Outside the company, same reason. Heck yeah, customer outside, what else? No Java. No, yeah, no Java. Right, that's where you get to. Most of you get to the same point. No one, of, none of you said up front, I don't have to deploy a client to my users. Because most of you will still deploy a client to your users. Right? Think about it. You're going to give them the integrated client into their notes client or same time connect or something like that. The web has good plugins. No download, right? You don't have to worry about the support. It's just a web interface. It's just a server that sits out there. All it does is handle chat requests that go back to your community server. But I can now push out changes immediately, right? I think that's the next bullet. Yeah. So updates are always current, meaning if I patch the proxy server or enhance <coughs> it, everybody gets it as soon as they relaunch. The downside is, where is it? I've got it out here. There it is. You always have to have a browser open. A user always must have a browser window open and running for this to function. Okay. Think about that carefully. This doesn't address mobility and things like that, even though you could use it mobile, but they always have to have a browser open, even mobile. That's a big reason why Google Talk is not used that much. What? Google Talk, why? Google Talk, you don't need to have a client for the most of the time closed browser and Google Talk. Oh, and the main, and the main, if you use Google inside of Gmail, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I have the clients loaded on mine. I use the client on my BlackBerry and everywhere else. I want to be able to communicate, like you said, if you close the browser, it's gone. And look what Google just did a week and a half ago. What did they do? Everybody gets Google Voice, and a year and a half ago, they gave everybody audio video. Right? In the U.S. In the U.S. Don't, don't play geographics with me. <laughs> Everyone got it. <laughs> to, to us, Everybody got it. <laughs> That's what we, we go around. Do you have it? Do you have it? Yes, yes, yes. I get here. We can't. Everybody got it. We just go with that theory. Go with me. So when I fired up a week ago, I had already had the audio video. Then my Google Voice account hooked in. So now all of that's embedded, right, in one place. Same idea they want to do at the same time. Plugins, right? Don't worry about deploying, but you have to have a browser open. But one issue is also that uh, I believe so that a five one audio video. Yeah, well, yeah, audio video. You know, like a, who's using it? But audio video. Yeah. The basic uh, chat plugins, presence awareness, rich text, all that fun stuff for users is there. Policy controls there. All that stuff is there. Okay, but it's just a web interface. 
That's the big difference. But it has nothing to do with your notes playing. Because both plugins and the web Yeah. Yeah. Plugins are supported too. Now, not everything. If it has certain local calls or paths, I mean, but a web-based one, like a plugin that calls other web services or things, is supported. Uh, multiple browsers, multiple versions. So now let's look at the new architecture. Right? We did this. We did the simple one, which is what we have today. We talked about the new features. Now let's put it out there. So I'm going to throw a server over there. I'm going to label them for you. I'm going to throw out another server. Yeah, another server. Another server. Throw out another server. Whew. What do they give me? Chat. Right? This is my core. I've got to upgrade it to Domino 851.852. It's the same time. We can do it. I'm going to install same time 851. How I'm going to do the install is a big difference. If this is going to be a standalone, forget the rest of the picture, this is going to be a standalone classic server that I can upgrade in place. Right? It's a standalone. If I'm going to make it part of this new environment, then I'm going to create what they call a deployment plan. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But a deployment plan lets the new console drive the entire environment. We're going to talk. I have a separate slide for the console. So bear with me. There's your console server. It could run DD2 also. Now I'm giving you a big picture scale. And I'll talk about consolidating in the next couple slides. System console, I have a meeting server. I have a proxy server, I have a media server, and then I could have an advanced or a gateway server or both. Depends, and not on the same machine. Right? These advanced or gateway are not going to be on the same machine because they run different versions of WebSphere as well as DB2 requirements. <laughs> not only from the rest of this, but from each other, they run different versions. But all of this stuff runs the same version of WebSphere, all right? and Access is the same version of DB2. Now, the cool part about this is, is these four servers can be pushed together and work together, right? They share or can share the same DB2 because it's the same version. They all have to have the console, which is con the controller, right? It runs this. And they all will run the same versions of WebSphere, so you're, you're good. These two? No. You can make the console talk to these two, the advanced and the gateway server. The problem is, is that the gateway server runs a different version of WebSphere as well as DB2, and the advanced server has a different version. Get the idea? Thank you, Lotus. Okay. I've been saying that for years, and I know how it's been. I always say, thank you, Lotus. Why? Because they can't get it all in the same version every time. We've had that with through mixed products. Things like connections. <coughs> to the back of the room. Things like connections, things like that you'd hope that you could go in and make one massive DB2 store, right, that's clustered and redundant, and share it between things like same time, and share it with things like connections, and share it with things like, no. Lotus says, no, no, not so much. Different groups, different timelines, different revisions, different cycles. Keep in mind, these are going to run the same WAS version and FixPack version all together. But you may have a totally different FixPack version or WAS version down for the gateway, and a different DB2 version. Right? So that may not be limited use 9.5. They just do that. This is always done. Our good friend. This is our buddy right there. Okay? Now, let's talk about putting it together. Here's your deployment choices. This is pilot mode. <clears throat> pilot mode. Community server. This domino will never, they'll never share. Community server, other same time servers. Those other same time servers are, as you can guess, the console, right, the proxy, the media, the manager, whatever you want to do, all together. This is not for production. If I ever come into one of your sites, I saw you. She was holding up signs at me, tell me that. I'll just I'll wave at you. Now, if you ever get to a site and I walk in and I see this and you're in production, you'll see me quietly laugh and then walk away it's not going to work unless you have three people. <laughs> right? If you have three people, in, does anyone have three people in your company? Really? Maybe five? Now, some of you are consultants, I know, but in the general life of things, who has the smallest number of people? Who has like 10 employees? No? Anybody under 50? Fit, how many do you have over there? 25. I thought he was going to say like 49. 25? <laughs> 
So, good story. So we were doing the upgrade seminar once, so you know, for the Domino 8 upgrade seminar that, that we did. All around the world, we did the first day of sessions. We came in the next morning and one of our attendees said, thank you guys, the first day was great, I've upgraded everything in my environment, my servers and my users are done. And we said, wow. So, like, how long? He's like, ah, it was a few hours of work, you guys did excellent the first day. We said, how many users do you have? He goes, I have four. <laughs> And he got two phone calls that day. So just letting you know, but still, <laughs> hit one. Hit one. Right. If you're going to run this, this server needs at least six gig of RAM. This server. This one is a, this is classic, right? You know what you can do. A couple gig of RAM, normal stuff. This one, if you're going to do pilot mode, and you're going to put DB2, console, meeting, media proxy, whatever you want, not gateway in advance, right? About six gig of RAM, minimum. Don't cheat. If you want to try 3 gig of RAM, uh, when you start the server, go to lunch, go to dinner, go to breakfast, <laughs> go to lunch again, and come back for the crash. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's going to try, and you'll see the process IDs, the pins, you'll see it. It'll, you know, slowly, it'll start. So every, every couple hours, you'll see another one fire off. And you'll come the next day, it'll say, out of system memory, douche, and the whole thing goes down. Six gig, I'm telling you. We've done this over and over from beta to design to deployment to a customer that said, I want all this on one server. We said, no, you don't. He said, yes, you do. We said, you're paying the bill. All right, off we go. Didn't go too well for him the next day. We had four servers. Okay. You can put DB2. You can put DB2 anywhere. Keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be on the server. DB2 is just an access point. Do not confuse existing DB2 environments that you already may have and think you're going to hook into them. They will upgrade, they will patch, they will do everything. Same time is very finicky. It's like, it's like a three-year-old with specific foods, right? They will only eat carrots that are sliced one direction, not the other, even though it's the same carrot, right? If you try to run a different fix pack of DB2, the same time is not going to work. A different fix pack, uh, eat, some of you think you're sneaky. If it says WebSphere version 7.0.0.1, don't go, ooh, two came out today and load dot two. No, it's not going to work. It's got to be very specific versions, okay? LDAP is going to go wherever you want it to go. So this is a pilot mode. Classic, all the stuff you want, DB2 can or may not be here, and then LDAP goes somewhere else. Not here, somewhere else. That's it. That's pilot mode, two servers. Production mode looks just like this. Why? The difference is we scale the need. Same thing, classic, DB2 or LDAP somewhere else. The number of these matters on what you need to deploy. We showed you the last slide that had, right? Any piece can be individual or together based on scale. So the proxy server, for example. Let's say I want to run the console and DB2 on here. I could easily put the proxy server on here up to maximum for one proxy server just about 2,000 users. Keep that in mind. If you have a company with eight to 10,000 users and you want to use the web browser interface for same time from here on, then you're gonna need about five of those servers. The proxy handles 2,000, no matter what else is on it. I don't care if the proxy stands by itself and you have a separate server for the console or DB2. 2,000 connections is about all you're gonna get out of that proxy. Good, understand that? You, most of you will never hit that. But just so you know, if you're scaling, and they say we want to build this for scale, 2,000 per server for proxy. Okay. Now, you can also deploy, a, this is another scenario. I'm giving you all the different scenarios in 45 minutes. You can also deploy a proxy against this server and never deploy meetings or the media server or anything else. You could provide a web base for your customers or clients, whatever you want to do against this classic server and be done. What do I need? Well, I'm going to need the console. I'm going to need DB2. And it's going to, in there, built in, it's going to do its LDAP queries built into the console, which we'll talk about the console. And, and then it's going to connect to my classic server and I'm done. Or if I'm never going to use the web proxy, I could put this as a meeting server. Then I can add components as I grow. Does that make sense? Combining them on one server, pilot mode. Now, I have had sites that are smaller thousand users that have put the proxy and the meeting together on one server. 
we still did about six gig of RAM, but they did the console and DB2 query LDAP and put the meeting and proxy on here because they don't do a lot of meetings and they didn't have a lot of web clients. So it was fine. Does that make sense? Yes? Questions so far on how you can mix and match? Are you noticing a theme? Classic by itself, DB2 can be anywhere you want, but the console and the rest of it scales on need. And you can piecemeal, you don't have to deploy everything the first day or ever. It's not required. Okay. So how will you, uh, yeah. how will you uh, yes, uh, get against the, the, uh, the front of the number of users if, yeah. if you have it on, on one server? Are there some... some uh, to move it or to... Yeah, no, to, just to see that you have to deploy another server. Um, are there yeah. any statistics or do you just wait until the users complain about I that? love this question. I love this for a reason. I'll give you an example. Um, Lotus is not given any benchmarks. No, Lotus is not given any statistics outside the proxy, the load for the proxy. They've given no maximum number of meetings, no maximum number of uh, participants yet, um, no tools to run against it for load balance yet, because it's web sphere based, you'd have to write some sort of web call tools, but they don't talk about what if I'm presenting versus screen sharing versus you know uploaded, so all these different catches. There's no number. So users is a bad sign, right? Because if they call you, something's already broken. So we generally go with a good baseline rule of trying to keep the console and DB2 separate from everything else. right? We know we can only do 2,000 per user for the proxy, and then by the number of meetings. Because remember, the key I told you up front is the meetings never go away anymore. I knew before if you were doing 100 meetings a month, Right, they were an hour to two hours long, they go away. And that's not concurrent, that's a month. Some of you go, well, we have 10 concurrent meetings at a time. How many users? Because the same time classic server can only support how many? Who knows the answer? There was a, no, there was a hard number for that classic server. Does anyone know what it was? It's concurrent, meaning all at one time, I don't care how many meetings it was, it was the same number. Basically, 250. You could have 250 people in one meeting, or 10 meetings with 25 each, or 250 meetings with one person. It was the same number. With the new meeting server, it never goes away. So that means you can have people coming in and out of the meeting anytime at all, or inviting you quickly to an ad hoc meeting, right? And bringing you into my meeting. And then getting out of the meeting, and then an hour later in with three other people, and then out of the meeting, then the media server. Yeah. Well, the system meeting does the regional, isn't it just a line of data? Well, it's a line of data as of when it is, but then, depending on when they're coming in and out, there's no schedule anymore, meaning you have no yeah, but, but, awareness. But, but you mean number of concurrent users in a meeting, not number of right. meeting rooms that no, they're able to create? No, not meaning, not meaning words, concurrent, yeah. because then that's the resource. Right, yeah, the line is nothing, it's always there, but before you had a schedule, so you knew how many concurrent there were. Now, you don't know when they're coming in and out until you see HTTP growth, you know, go. And that's WebSphere too, and Java too, right? So that gets into the difference there. So there's no hard numbers yet for Lotus. That's one of the downsides. But where do you monitor on the ISS? On the, uh, on the, on the yes. Or? Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the IBM HTTP server, that's the best place to usually watch. And then you go in and start tuning inside of WebSphere usually and try to adjust from there. But there's no hard numbers yet. And I know someone else had a question. Yeah, yeah just, just a pilot uh, for like two, three users. Yeah. Would it be possible to put them together? Uh, on, one? on one? No, no. The, the, these two will never, they are a couple that are joined together forever, but never on the same box. They're always going to need, you're going to need two boxes, your classic server and then everything else. Never on the same box. The HTTP stacks alone won't, won't work. As soon as you get to web stuff, you've got problems. Forget the rest of the resources. Never on the same box. Two is the minimum, all right? There is no limit to the number of maximum, but two is the minimum. Um, now, the current versioning will let you get away with running advanced together with meeting. Just don't do it. It's, it would work, but don't do it. Why do I say that? Because I guarantee they're going to upgrade same time 851 to something, and advanced won't get upgraded yet. So you'd be stuck in that, that never world. Just consider it a separate product. Okay? This is one thing you're going to get very familiar with. It's called the Installation Manager. 
Yes. A question about the grids. Yeah. <coughs> if you would just use the proxy. Yeah. Um, you don't want to use the links. You can still link to the old terminal, so you won't need to upgrade it. No. Yeah. Well, you don't need to upgrade it, but I would. But no, you don't need to. But I would. Yeah, definitely. No, you do not need to. Well, it needs to be at least a five. Don't go to seven. You know, don't go anywhere in that realm. At least bring it up. But I would just go ahead and get it to eight five one. It doesn't change anything as a classic server. No additional feature. It just it's just upgrade there. All right. So we're down to the final count. This is your. It, this will install no matter what. Forget the DB two part yet. That will install no matter what. You will have the installation manager. Why? Is because every install screen then looks the same from here on out. So as you install each component piece, the installation manager is behind the scenes. It launches and then says, what packages do you have? And you saw the DB2 choice, right? This is what you start seeing for every piece. System console, DB2, MIDI, MIDI uh, media server, uh, proxy server, all these start showing up as options to install. But the, it will install the installation manager one time, and it will be there, OK? So don't be surprised. The first time you go to install, it makes you install this thing first. Then it comes back and does DB2. So all the screens will start looking like this. What you start seeing is a consistency across every single install screen, a welcome and install that. But once inside now, it looks a little fuzzy up there for you. Once inside, you have a new section called Same Time System Console. So it's a plug-in for WebSphere, basically. This is where you drive all the configurations, deployment plans, and prerequisites. One of the key things you can do is build predetermined deployment plans, meaning you're going to tell the servers how they're going to behave because the same time system console decides everything. Right? You will not deploy a piece on its own because it's going to ask you, where's my deployment plan? I have a screenshot in a second. It's going to ask you, where do I go to get my information? This sets the configurations before you install. So what you do is install the installation manager, DB2, then install the console, and once you install the console, connect it to LDAP. Then you start building your plans. And the plans are just a bunch of fields you fill in. That's all they are. You're going to tell it a name, you're going to tell it what server name, what host name, things like that. It's just a plan. And then when the server installs, it actually makes a call out. Right? So I'm going to create a new deployment plan. You can actually modify one or delete one, but it says create a new one. I'm going to create a deployment plan. And once I do that, when I get inside of actually installing, oh, as you can see, it's the same for all of them. That's the meeting server one. It actually then says, where's my deployment plan? including your 851 server. So all of it looks to the console. The console runs everything. The SSC is the controller of the entire process and running. OK? Right on time. All right. A couple common questions. So we'll be done on time. Should I install fresh or migrate? My opinion is if you can get new hardware for your classic server, grab it. Do it while you can, meaning go ahead and get new hardware for it and upgrade. Is it a fresh install considered then? Yes, it is. It's considered a fresh install, even though you're moving data, right? You're going to move data. It's a fresh install. If you can get new hardware, take advantage of it. For the other servers, you're buying new hardware, hardware no matter what you do, right? You're adding servers. But for the classic, if you can, get new hardware. If not, upgrade in place. It won't hurt anything. Everything dependent on what we're going to install, how much RAM, how much memory. Now, what about the integrated client, the one inside of Notes? What do I do there? Well, right now, if you install 8.5.2 of Notes, this is what you're going to have at the same time, 8.0.2. You can upgrade it to 8.5.1 if you want. You're not going to gain anything really from it. There's no new big features that you're going to get from it, but you can to keep it consistent. Well, I give you a link on here. Um, 8.5.2 has 8.0.2. You can upgrade it to 851. You must download the package with your passport or whatever you have. Partner advantage, download it, unpack it, and then install it. It'll say, make sure notes is down, and I'm going to upgrade it. The next time I go into help about and look at the extra stuff, I'll see that this now says 851. For a step by step screenshot, go to Mitch's blog. I actually put the link on the bottom. Where is it? There it is. I put the link on there. I'll, it'll be the slides are there for download, but you can go out there. Um, CuriousMitch.com. CuriousMitch.com. 
So Mitch did a screenshot step by step of installing it. He had nothing better to do. All right, last slide, and then we're done on time. This is the deployment plan slide. The SSC, right? You log in. I didn't put the login screen, security stuff. But the deployment plan, you have to pick a name. So every time I install something, this is the Neasy server, I have to be able to pick a deployment plan. If one doesn't exist, you can't install the product. The SSC has to have the plans done, and then when you install the server, it says, where's my deployment? Okay? Without it, you can't install it. Installation manager, DB2, hook to LDAP, then start installing your products after you build plans. That's the order. There's no way around it. It's all pretty step by step. It controls everything about the architecture. Everything. All right? Now, ah, I only have like two slides. I think we're right on time. Where's the click? Oh. There we go. Things remember. Yeah, two slides. Perfect. Everything you need is on Passport Advantage, including the exact DB2 version. All of it's there. When you open up under Passport or the Partner World area and search for 851 at the same time, that download area will have every exact version of software you need. Don't go stray and try to get your own stuff somewhere else. Don't be one of those fancy guys and then call me saying this didn't work. Okay? I tried to make this easy. You can scale any component you want, except the classic will remain the same and you must have DB2 and the console. Everything else is up to you. Totally optional. I say deploy in stages. Get the classic up and get the meeting server up. Right? Hook those together. Then add in things. Sometimes you'll do the proxy, depending on what you want to play around. But don't worry about media yet. Don't worry about the proxy necessarily. Get the core stuff up and running. Right? Get the LDAP configured. Get all that working before you go crazy and add the other features. Otherwise, there's too many parts and you don't know which one is broken. Really, go slow, one end server at a time. It makes it much easier. I get to a lot and they try to do everything at one time. And you don't have to change everything just because it's new. Remember, Classic is still there. It still does meetings if you want. It still does chat. And until you hook it to the new same time 851, it's just like it was today. So you can upgrade it and still be right in line with everybody else. All right. And oh yeah, the chat is chat. Meaning it's just chat, guys. Don't freak out. It's just it, the Classic server is still just chat. So any last questions while well, I put up how to find me? Yes. So this is and the classic meeting server, is that dancing now? Should you first install Cisco install? The install order, once again, is so you get your server, you'll install the installation manager because it forces you to. You have no choice. Then DB2 because you have to build one table for the system console in there one time. After DB2, you'll launch, you'll connect it to LDAP to say where it is, and after that you build deployment plans. And every plan will specify Everything you need to know, host name, where I'm going to sit. You know, if there's a DB2 table needed, you'll have to make that on the side. But there's, from that point, it's a deployment plan. Does that make sense? You have to go in those first three-step order, and then you're on your own. You can choose any piece you want from there. It's like the buffet line. Get your tray, get your plate, get a fork, and then pick what you want, right? Same thing. Installation manager, DB2, LDAP, pick what you want. That's it. Let's say you only want to do the classic meeting server for now. Then you don't do anything with this stuff. You leave it exactly as it was. You, okay, so you don't basically bother with this because you're not in... You're not you're touching there. the console yet. If you want to just upgrade your classic, you're done. There's nothing you have to do with all this SSC stuff. What else do you have? No, so you can find you guys know. It's, I do notes on anything, like I said. I don't care what it is. It's there. The network is where I publish everything. And we do a ton of webcasts about all this stuff, free ones. Every like two weeks we do a webcast for an hour about something. We've done everything from policies to same time to development. To, to we've done everything. So if you need the link for that, let me know because they're all replays are out there recorded. So you can watch these. Okay. Questions? Anything else? Yes. I was curious. What's your answer to a customer who asked, why should I upgrade to 8.5.1? Why would? If, if he is on a release, let's say, earlier than 8. Meetings. It's the only reason. For yeah. right now that I give them immediately is meetings. Okay. Basically, I'm going to say, do you need a zero download meeting center, right, that's accessible from anywhere, that has a better interface than the old one? It does. A better interface, that's still not perfect. Don't get me there. But a better interface, zero download, more browser independent, less requirements, no Java, and they go, yes, 
then I install it. If they say, well, uh, we chat, I go, nothing. That's the, that's the cell phone. If they need a web interface for a client, yeah, if they don't want ST links. That's for the proxy. Yeah. But that's not a selling point to me yet. It's usually. No, it's a later step. Right? Yeah, it's a later step for us. But you do not see any issue that the, the video audio stuff isn't supported for external. It isn't now. The reflector doesn't work with the no, yeah, no, but yeah. if, I, if you look at the other product, like the one for Microsoft. Even GoToMeeting for web I mean, I use GoToWebinar for a lot of my stuff just because I have to because audio video, you know, it's, the telephony is included. Yeah, it's not a selling because they don't have it now. So to me, it's not a, it's not a kill point. They don't have it now. You know? um, what about licensing? If you uh, put it on uh, core servers, it costs you four licenses? Or? You're based upon the number of users, not the number not, of okay. It's a PVU, so it's processors. It's a goofy, I hate licensing. <laughs> All right, they're throwing me out, but I've been done on time. But she's throwing me out. So any other questions, find me on the side. Otherwise, thank you very much, everyone. All right, stay great.